Hello everyone. Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Holia Institute of Technology. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for getting continuous notification. Now you are going to have another illuminating session with our two learning professors, Professor uh, Deep Dr. Ghosh and Professor Gautam Bose, and they are going to talk this time on AI City Idea Lab. Uh, and it is a very new topic to you. Uh, probably you haven't yet heard about all these things. Now, these two learned professors will be throwing light on this and would be uh, helping you to gather some experience regarding this field, which is very, very necessary for your BTEC course. Now, over to you, sir. Thank you, Priyanka Ben. <clears throat> uh, good morning, uh, my dear professors. And good morning, my beloved students. Today, uh, we are going to talk about a uh, new facility. Uh, let me tell you the background first. Then things will be much clear to you. This year, in 2021, All India Council, Council for Technical Education has taken one initiative to establish laboratory in the higher education institute. Specifically, they have targeted the technological institute. And uh, uh, amongst 49 institutes all over India, we are uh, privileged to get this kind of facility in our campus. So we have prepared a very small presentation to make you understand about this laboratory. We are in the process of establishing this laboratory in the campus. And let me tell you, it's a central facility. Students from all the departments can join and can take the facility. So uh, this AICT Idea Laboratory is the main scheme, which you can see with a logo. And uh, we have the joint venture with this All India Council for Technical Education about this Idea Laboratory. The total project cost would be uh, near to 1.1 crore and that would be shared equally by the Institute and All India Council for Technical Education. So what is to be done in the laboratory? Shortly, uh, slowly we'll go, go and we'll try to realize what is to be done here. And uh, if you look at the experience during our life journey, always we come up with many ideas. You know, in many of the cases, we are not getting opportunity to implement those ideas. Specifically, I'm talking about technical ideas. So that is why this facility is being made, where you can develop your idea, you can evaluate your idea, and you can apply your idea. In short, with a punchline, it can be mentioned like this, learning by doing. So it's the facility where you can experience and you can learn. That's the basic idea. So in short, let us look at the vision of this particular laboratory to build a robust ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups, which will in turn drive sustainable technical and economic growth and generate large scale employment opportunities throughout the nation. So that's the vision and that's the vision of our high, higher education department. Okay. And we are also in party into that. So idea lab would be uh, set up to pull the innovative ideas, any kind of innovative ideas of students basically, because it's a student centric activity and to test their feasibility using various equipments, tools, conceivables available under one roof for the conversion of an idea into a prototype, right? And furthermore, the idea lab would extend and go beyond the academic campus or a nearby region 
and collectively it would be the nation's ideal act. So it's not a laboratory actually, it's a kind of technological movement. Precisely the objectives are to provide all facilities under one roof, as I mentioned earlier, for the conversion of an idea into a prototype, training in the 21st century skills, critical thinking, problem solving, collaborations, etc. Making engineering students more curious, imaginative and creative and engineering education more engaging. An idea lab will be centered around activities and events to promote multidisciplinary education and research. And now, if you look at the educational movement or educational progress of all over the world, you can see the all the applications are moving towards multidisciplinary. So being engineering aspirants, you need to you know, get those skills so that you can sync with these ideas. Typically, that would be, you know, the layout of the laboratory. And if you move from the top, there'll be a reception or visit, visitor space. You will have a meeting room here. Design and discussion uh, room. Here, faculty and staff will be sitting. There, you will find a mechanical section. Okay. You will have central workshop and 3D printing area, electrical section, electronic section, CNC uh, router, laser, printing, modeling, casting, cubicles for working room, projected exhibition space, central storage. So that would be the uh, space. Now quickly, I'll, I'll just go uh, for the facilities the probable facilities of the laboratory. The first one you can see, it's a CNC wood router. So I've incorporated some of the videos to uh, get the experience at this point of time. But when you'll be joining the institute offline, then definitely you have to join in this particular setup, which is basically the technological movement of India. And uh, you should make your idea feasible. Let's see the video. You see all the settings are being done with the you know softwares.
so i hope uh, you have like this uh, particular demonstration we have tried to you know give you the demonstration about the life facility in the laboratory and uh, if yes you write it down in the chat box so we'd like to see by this time uh, let us go for you know 3d machining pcb design and fab fabrication a kind of demonstration to see how the pcb is is uh, being done look at this procedure so i told you it's a multidisciplinary do not think that pcb belongs to electronics people no it's not like this so being mechanical engineer also you should have, have enough skill set to you know design or make pcbs even one computer science engineer has to also come up to work with this you know uh, hardware based systems or core systems because the earlier uh, design earlier setup which we have shown absolutely it is working with the software only so it's multidisciplinary that way so let, let us look at this kind of you know milling machine by the help of that pc is being made and i have told you in this laboratory you will be learning through your work so this is how you know there are many ways uh, for making pcbs this is one of the way and then i'll show you how to make a you know uh, a kind of board cutting
then let us look at 3d scanning this is most important part of this kind of you know idea laboratory and with this you can go for import substitution many devices can turn a physical object into a digital 3d model in industry high-end scanners like this rexcan cs plus capture the form of an object by placing it on a turntable and rotating it in front of a head that features two cameras and an LED light source. Alternatively, to scan large objects that cannot be placed on a turntable, other high-end 3D scanners like the Artec EVA are manually moved around an object, such as a person, in order to capture a 3D model of their shape and texture. It's also possible to scan a person in a custom-built scanning booth fitted with a large number of digital SLR cameras. Personal 3D scanners include the MakerBot digitizer. Here, an object is placed on a turntable where two lasers are projected onto it while it rotates before a single CMOS sensor. The Matter and Form 3D scanner has a similar turntable, two laser and CMOS design, while the Scanify from Fuel 3D is a handheld point-and-shoot device that captures shape and colour data from a pair of cameras. 3D Systems also offers a relatively low price consumer scanner called the Sense, which again has a two camera handheld design. Various types of scanners are available. As an alternative to investing in dedicated hardware, anybody can use the free 123D Catch app from Autodesk to turn a series of photographs into a 3D model. The software is available for Android and Apple tablets and smartphones, or can be run in a browser. However, here I'm going to install and use the version for a Windows PC. I first need to position a 3D object in a well-lit location. I then need to grab a camera, and here I'm using my trusty Nikon D200, although any camera will work just fine. To create a good 3D scan, you need to completely rotate around your object and to shoot at least 20 photographs of it. To maximise the chance of success, here, I'm rotating around the elephant twice from two different angles and capturing a total of 36 images. Having launched the 123D Catch desktop package, I need to select my series of photos. Then, with the photo selected, I'm going to click the green arrow. I'm then required to enter some metadata, after which the program will upload my photos, capture a file from them, and then download it back to my PC. And there we are. With the processing complete, we get a 3D view of our scan, which we can move around and inspect. As you can see, we also get a virtual representation of the cameras that created the scan. As I hope you appreciate, what 123D Catch has done is very clever indeed, as my camera was completely wild, with no data on its different positions. Selecting the appropriate tool, zooming in with the mouse wheel, and going back to rotation mode, you can see that the scan of my elephant really is very good indeed. However, there are inevitably some extra polygons at the base that we don't want, and to sort this out, I'm next going to use another free Autodesk app. To do this, I'm going to select Export Capture As to save my elephant as an OBJ object file. Purchased by Autodesk in 2011, Mesh Mixer is a really cool piece of free stored the PC version into which I've imported my elephant OBJ file. To get rid of the unwanted polygons at the bottom, I'm going to select Edit and Plane Cut. I'll then move the resultant cutting plane down through the object so that it'll slice across the elephant just above the bottom of the legs. I'll select Hard Edge as I want a nice flat base and then accept the operation. To make sure that things will 3D print OK, I'm next going to use the Make Solid function, which will leave us with a nice, final 3D object. Lastly, I'll select Export and save the file in STL ASCII format, which will take Mesh Mixer a bit of time to process. As I explained in my recent Ultimaker 2 workflow video, to make a 3D print, I finally loaded the Elephant STL file into the Cura slicing package. Here I've scaled it to 75mm tall, before exporting G-code for the object to an SD card that can be inserted into a patiently waiting Ultimaker 2. The printer will then get on with printing the elephant out one layer after another, and which I think is a really cool thing to watch. But don't worry, 
we won't watch it for six hours, which was the time it took to print the elephant out. Finally, I'll introduce my plastic printout of the elephant to the original wood carving. Oh, and just because I had the time, I've also printed out this larger version of the elephant. And, having done this, it also really seemed necessary to make a tiny little baby version of the elephant just to finish things off. So we'll have uh, this 3D scanning set, uh, set, set up also. Then we'll look at the CO2 laser cutter and engraver. So uh, all these uh, facilities will be open for all the students. So uh, we expect that they will come up and they will join this laboratory and they will learn all these things. So, you know, a kind of the skill set they can acquire. Irrespective of any branch.
there's a kind of you know electronics workbench and it varies from uh, uh, the systems to systems so this is one kind of electronics work workbench it may vary depending on the requirements always you know you know electronics uh, test bench comes up with a circuit breaker so if there is any adverse situation comes so automatically it breaks the circuit this is really interesting this is heart of the this laboratory this is called 3d printer there are many versions available in the market depending on the requirements we have to go for that
Then at the last, I'll show you some uh, mini lab, uh, lathe machine. Of course, in this uh, presentation, I have not shown many electronic or instrumentation based systems. Um, uh, obviously, these mechanical uh, design or mechanical systems can be associated with the lots of electronics or embedded system. And you can think of a you know, prototype system. A small, small things which will ensure your learning about you know, different skill areas. And finally, you can think of our, you know, real-time applications and can think of a prototype. And which may lead to entrepreneurship activity also. It may lead to patenting also. But that's the future steps. But initially, you have to learn these basic systems and and you have to come up with your ideas. Start with small, achieve some big. That's the motto of this laboratory. And I've told you this is learning by doing, a short of you know, experiential learning. And that this is the best way of learning in today's world. And this laboratory will also come up with embedded systems where you can put all this and afterwards we'll show it. And uh, after this, there will be some uh, activities also. Here in this point, I request Professor Gautam Bose to continue. Professor Bose. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Oh, it's not afternoon, it's uh, nearly 12. So once again, a uh, warm welcome to all the participants and all the distinguished faculty members who have uh, wonderfully crafted this program of orientation. So uh, Professor Devdatta Ghosh has uh, elaborated in depth regarding AICT idea lab. Now, uh, I'd like to add a few lines here and there, uh, just to brush up the overall perspective of idea lab. Now, see, so basically, uh, this idea lab 
is to nurture the idea of young brains right so this young budding engineers who are uh, newly getting inducted in this domain of engineering this young generation have wonderful brain and we need to inculcate those ideas which can be transformed into reality so this is the basic motto of idea so if you see what is an idea it's a thought process right or a suggestions which can be converted into some real form or actions and maybe uh, we can link this idea into the performance uh, which can be perceived and the research the, that we can do or we can progress with this kind of ideas like in our childhood days we used to dream we used to we, we used to think of many things here and there something may not be productive but still we we used to uh, we used to uh, tweak our brains and gray cells so that the idea or some kind of innovations some kind of uh, some kind of uh, real things can be developed right so is to scribble in papers on walls you'll find children are scribbling on walls on boards papers here and there if you give them a pencil or a pen they'll scribble and they will put some of their ideas or some of their thought process into some kind of sketches which is a form of reality so basically uh, our intention is to bring that idea inside you into real form okay so we will be acting as a facilitator in providing you that space that canvas of depicting your ideas and making your ideas into reality okay so uh, i hope this young generation will take my call because nowadays we are deeply submerged into technology so technology does not mean mimicking it all the time we we forget that we have some originality see google in google if you type anything it will give you some results okay so uh, from google we can search for information but not for creativity so what this in new generation or this young technocrat should go or should seek is the inner 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 thought process okay so the mental idea or picture inside you has to come out and it has to be reflected in your work and it has to be portrayed in some life form that is the idea of this idea lab and in this idea lab in order to transform in your ideas into reality you need some mechanisms and these mechanisms will be provided to you so that you can use your hand use your use your uh, sweat to get the reality to transform the uh, the idea into the picture that is there in your mind into reality and you can feel it you can touch it and it is your creation that will give you the greatest satisfaction so see whenever we have some passion we have some creation within us and if we make it within with our hands that is the satisfaction we get no money no external material uh, material being can satisfy our passion okay so uh, there are certain examples like the first telephone was invented in 1876 by graham bell steam engine was uh, invented by james watt we all know this carl benz was the first uh, who developed this in 1885 the car or airplane was developed in 1903 by american wright brothers but beyond his time it was leonardo da vinci who has created or developed his idea or thought process into sketching or drawing an airplane 
okay leonardo was considered the first engineer who uh, have designed many this air powered flight in his uh, drawings so the modern pencil that we use was developed and invented in 1795 by nicolas jacques conte in 1968 dr spencer silver who was a chemist at 3m company who invented sticky notes so the sticky notes is very very very, very interesting so he was actually preparing some glue now that glue was having very less uh, sticking power so alternatively he developed the sticky notes which became very useful in modern times in 1770 in english engineer edward narin was is reported to have developed the first widely marked rubber or eraser so the american man named carls foster invented the modern toothpick basically he was traveling in uh, in brazil and he found one of the farmers was picking some wooden small pick and he was uh, pricking his teeth and from there he got that idea and he developed this toothpick in 1973 nathaniel wait of dupont was the first who developed the pet bottle that the coke or the cold drinks that we drink the first pet bottle tetra pack the bottle uh, that we use for uh, uh, keeping milk and other liquid stuff was created in 1951 by akharlond raizung a food cartoon company by ruben raizung and eric akharlond okay so the plan of integrating aict idea lab with other departments it's a multidisciplinary initiative which has been taken care of by the education and research department of aict and uh, haldia which has 15 btech and 5 mtech courses uh, has been awarded with this idea lab and the objective is to equip the students community to develop and commercialize their own innovative ideas through entrepreneurship and open innovation to enhance awareness among the student towards entrepreneurship and startup creations with improved infrastructure and facility which will be providing in the idea lab to augment the curricular towards inclusion of entrepreneur skills and problem based learning plan for sustenance of aict idea lab beyond 2 years is to use the improved infrastructure and technical support system for basic incubation facilities to create corpus funds for initial funding of the business by sharing the prototypes to different msmes as developed in the idea lab to associate the leading experts of various incubators in the country to integrate industry research and academic institutions together to organize regularly the following programs faculty and staff development programs skill development programs boot camps ideation workshops organizing technical exhibitions organizing conference and sim symposiums okay so guys the sky is the limit the only factor which is required is your involvement and your idea and that is what it is required to work in hand get in hand experience and uh, share your views and ideas and develop it into some productive artifacts or products in idea lab so i'll request all the students to come forward with that ideas and work with us to make our world a better place to live thank you very much okay so activities already professor bosch has mentioned so at the end i'll, I'll show you just of the you know creations Uh, which can be developed by ICT ID lab. Basically, these are the creations we, we can see in the Fab Lab. Okay, just quickly look at it. So it is not uh, merely a laboratory; it is the technological movement. So let us together build the dream. That's it from our side. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Haldia Institute of Technology. 
please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for getting continuous notification.